Welcome everybody. It's a new year. Oh my god. Well, not necessarily for y'all, but we're recording this on the January the 1st, 2022. <laughs> and uh, we've decided mm. that we're going to start it pretty spicy this year. We're going to get into a State of the Union of Comedy. Uh, you read the description. We're talking on this frame rate, a very special frame rate, about the newest Dave Chappelle special on Netflix, The Closer. I'm Abe Epperson. I'm joined today by... Uh, yeah, man. I already feel like awkwardly backing out of the room. Why did we do this? But here we are. Here we are. It's Chappelle. <laughs> We're talking Chappelle so we can start the year off with a bang. There is some precedence. We uh, we covered the Louis C.K. movie, I Love You, Daddy, on this yeah. show. This is a, a show where we rate frames. Oof. And I got to say, I'm... I have been a tremendous fan of Dave Chappelle. And so uh, I actually floated this idea and Abe said, hey, yeah, that's a good idea. I did. I think this is an exercise in coming to it afresh with an open mind, not just instantly knee jerking to like, oh, he sucks now. I hate anything he says. Like I, I came to this. I wanted to, you know, rub my eyes and like blank my mind and just experience Yo, a new Dave Chappelle deal? thing and be <laughs> like, Dave yeah, Chappelle. what's the deal with Dave Chappelle? What do I really think about this now that things are complicated? And who better to join us to discuss complicated things about comedy than, uh, I mean, stellar stand-up comedian in his own right, podcaster extraordinaire, please introduce yourself, super special guest. Hello, I am Adam Todd Brown. I Woo! I tell jokes and I do, I do pod, I, I cast some pod. That's Sometimes. right. Nice. You you talk on podcasts about things, and you're an accomplished stand-up comedian, so we thought, who better? Uh, also, you host Unpopular Opinion, and I think some of those will probably come out of this show, this episode. I can see that. I could see it. So, uh, yeah, let's just dive right into it. I'm going to ask first, Adam, why, what did you, what was your initial gut feeling when we reached out and said we want to cover the new Chappelle special? Um, I was actually very excited because it's a thing I tried to cover on a podcast that fell through. And I specifically wanted that this one particular guest and I haven't been able to get him back yet. So I haven't talked about this at all on a podcast, not really. So right. I'm, I'm excited to talk about it. And I mean, I don't, I don't really have like a gut reaction or feeling about talking about it. Like, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. Well, that's because you're the grizzled pro who's like, I'll talk about whatever you need me to talk about. But <laughs> I felt, I'll say this. I think the thing I'm most famous for at this point is that you can see me laughing in the first Chappelle Netflix special. And uh, people are constantly writing me about that. And because of that, I still feel like he has a special place in the cosmology of my brain. And uh, I'll be honest, that special that I attended, whatever it was called, Sticks and Stones, I think, um, was a moment of disillusion for me where a bunch of stuff he said <laughs> pissed me off. And I went home and ended up not watching the next special. But then the closer came out and I'm like, well, let's check back in. This man has, you know... It said some of the wisest, funniest, truest things I've ever heard. And uh, let's see what he's got going on right now. So I watched The Closer. And Abe, we haven't heard from you yet. Someone's got to, I think we're all hesitating to take a big swing. But Abe, what did you think about The Closer? <laughs> you know, there's a, have you guys heard of, um, I mean, it's like pretty generic vanilla take, which I guess is a great way to start. Because I'm the non-stand-up here. Um... I thought that another stand-up, if you guys heard of British comedian James Acaster, had the best bit on this. And he was talking about Ricky Gervais when he was talking about it. Mm -hmm. He has this bit about he was rebranding uh, his image to be more of like a bad boy. Like that's his whole new bit. Uh, and he says, 
uh, edgy comedian. He has a bit on edgy comedians where he basically says like, notice how there's been like edgy comedians like Ricky Gervais who have come out and like really dunked on trans people. Right. Mm -hmm. And their response is bad luck. That's my job. I'm a stand up comedian. I'm meant to challenge people. If you don't like to be challenged, don't watch my show. What's the matter, guys? Too challenging for you. Mm -hmm. Uh, And then he responds to himself by saying, yeah, you know, who's been long without challenge, the trans community, Uh, which is a nice it's it's uh, I think that's more or less what this kind of comes down to. I think there's a lot to talk about here about what uh, Chappelle talks about, about the punching down on people, punching up and punching lines and like navigating that space. But when it you cut it down to its bare minimum of like what's what is a comedian, I think that they should speak the truth. And I don't think there's much truth in checking the, quote, privilege of the trans community. I just don't feel it. Yeah, I I, I, I agree with that. And I find it really ironic that this whole thing is, oh, free speech. I should be able to say what I want. But also if I say a joke you don't like, don't you say shit because right. then you're canceling me and you're stifling right. my free speech. And it's like, no, you're trying to stifle everyone else's free speech because you don't want to be criticized for the things you say. Like, I'm sorry social media is a thing now, but people probably hated your fucking jokes in the 90s too. They just couldn't rally around and all tell you at once. But now they can. Sorry. Get well, better at comedy. I thought it was very – one of the most interesting lines in The Closer to me was when he talked about punching down and said a lot of people come up to me afterwards, a tran- p- trans people or allies, and say, please stop punching down at my people. And he go, and he says, punching down? What the fuck does that even mean? And I'm like – that's very telling that you don't have a strong grasp on what punching down is or you don't you seem to not think it matters or that that's not a fair equation. But uh, it was really interesting to me just because I also analyze it through like the comedy lens and the, you know, the structuralist like formulae lens. And man, I got to say, it didn't seem like there were a ton of jokes in it either, which was really surprising to me because it does Mm -hmm. actually seem like a shift and it seems like something that has to do with becoming so rich and famous that you lose the necessity to like critically hone your stuff. Um, Not that there weren't really brilliant. I mean, if you're talking purely from like a set a punchline level there were brilliant moments or jokes that i went ah that worked but there was also it sort of made me think about reflect upon like my love of george carlin because george carlin will also leave the jokes aside to say a bunch of stuff that he thinks is wise and true and Mm. i do have to call myself out for like Why is it okay that I love George Carlin just because I happen to agree with everything he says? And then I go to the Chappelle stuff and I go, well, that that offends me. That upsets me. I don't like that. That seems mean spirited. Uh, And I do think something that Adam, you just said is so true, which is that jokes are always, or most jokes uh, take the piss out of something or someone or make light of some kind of thing that someone holds sacred or sacrosanct. And I had to use this as like a, the closer as like a barometer of, do you think it's a thing where the older you get, the more seriously you take trauma and other people's trauma? Or do you think that Dave Chappelle is actually becoming more preachy and less funny? Like, is it me or is it him? Uh, I think it's... It's him. Uh, it's I find it really disappointing that he and so many so many other comedians, with all the things happening in the world right now, the hill they've decided to die on is I should still be able to make fun of trans people. And mm. the problem for me is, uh, I said this before we started recording, but I don't think stand-up comedy especially really matters that much anymore. Like, you brought up Mm. George Carlin. The difference between George Carlin and Dave Chappelle is George Carlin was challenging the status quo. Dave Chappelle wants to keep things the way they are. Like, this isn't... He's not fighting for change. He's fighting for... uh, Let's, like, backtrack to 2014 when we could still, Mm. you know, do kooky Asian voices and you know, be uh, shitty to trans people. And that's 
that's everything comedy claims not to be. Like comedy would have you believe that they really fight against the system and speak truth to power. Well, where where was stand up comedy during Trump? Like Dave Chappelle didn't have anything to say about Trump, but you're this mad about not being able to shit talk trans people? The fuck out of here. I mean, like, that's a very good point. Uh, the th- something that came through to me, though, that I think adds a layer of nuance is that it seems from at least from the closer, uh, especially because he like wrapped it up with a a state of the union address that didn't seem to have jokes, but where he was like, I'm done talking to the trans community after this. This is what I want to say. Mm-hmm. Uh, you got to love people who do a whole hour of shitting on a community and then the go, but I love everybody. And he told that story at the end where he's like, I have a trans friend. They're dead mm-hmm. now. And they weren't funny when they were alive, but I have a trans friend. Um, so I, it's sort of having your cake and eating it too. But what I think is very fascinating about Chappelle specifically is obviously uh, you know, he ended it by saying, and stop punching down at my people. And he talks about, he has this metaphor of uh, the car, the car of human rights, and that trans people and the LGBTQ community in general have pushed black people out of the driver's seat. Or um, he said, yeah. like, I don't hate trans people. I'm jealous of trans people because mm-hmm. you're getting everything that black people have wanted for hundreds of years. And right. that is both compelling to me in that it sh- it reveals where he's coming from it's like the illogic where you go oh that's why you think that like it was a big moment for me when uh i really took the time to put myself in the mental shoes of like a religious zealot uh because i was arguing with this guy who kept coming at me and going like but you're a murderer you're a baby murderer because i'm pro-choice or whatever that was the argument we happened to be having and uh you know i had to sort of meditate for a moment and realize that if I really believed that babies were conscious and souls exist and that the fetus is conscious immediately upon conception, that would really bug me. It would feel very urgent. It would feel like, oh, they're murdering thousands of babies, right? That would be a huge deal for me. So I can sort of like, I still completely disagree with the school of thought, but it's interesting to me to formulate an understanding of where someone's coming from. Yeah. Um, I want to, I kind of want to like push the button a little bit on what you were talking about earlier. And I want to really like have it out because Mm -hmm. I think it's the core of the issue, which is like when it comes down to it, it's not just Chappelle. When we talk about why this does matter, and because we're going to say, we've all said, like, it does matter, but also comedy doesn't matter. And the reason is because Chappelle defenders don't see the trans community as marginalized. They think they have too much power in the public discourse, and they keep people away from holding different opinions. That's what it comes down to, right? And I think that there's a big thing that we should talk about good faith versus bad faith interpretations on both sides. Um, I think that what he's saying is that we're not outraged enough about violence of POCs, excuse me, and we're outraged too much about hurting people's feelings. But I think there's some bad faith in there from Chappelle that he can't really deny because he's comparing ends of the spectrum in order to make his case seem stronger. That's something he does a lot in the special. He bolsters up like himself with his personal struggles and it's pretty smart because he points out how you can deal with smaller traumas with humility and humor it makes him look good and then he later flips the script and tries to make the trans community seem humorless um i think that that's actually a bad faith interpretation of what's happening from Chappelle. and i think that there's a lot of bad faith of you know going both sides both ways but Mm -hmm. let's like focus on exactly what why it matters and what's like the the wrong thing here right like he says my problem isn't with transgender people is always been with white people this may be true but then he goes on to say that gender is a fact well it's also right? super interesting because in that statement he's saying you can be both and he says like can't you be gay and racist the answer is yes so he's saying like my problem is now trans people it's with white people that acknowledges the existence of intersectionality But then he'll turn around and completely deny the existence of intersectionality by setting up the idea that trans rights undermine black rights. And it's like, uh, I mean, what about black trans people? It's interesting to me that 
he sees the movements like the social movements fighting for human rights to be warring against each other. And I don't think that that's actually the case. I think they bolster each other. Exactly. I mean, my question would be, what exactly is it that trans people are getting that Mm -hmm. (laughs) like, I mean, well, there's yeah. there's a reason trans people are fighting to have the same rights as everyone else. Like, it's I I don't get this notion that oh, it's just smooth sailing for trans people now. Bullshit! Like, yeah, trans he, people he mentioned... are getting murdered in the streets too. Like, I don't yeah. I don't know why it has to be a competition. Like, I get it. I get exactly. it. Exactly. Like, I, I mean, the, I, the sequence uh, of oppressing, thought oppressing black right. people is the foundation of this country. It is what exactly. this country is built on. So yes, I get it from that standpoint, but I just don't, I, in, in my view of it, I don't see how trans people have it that much easier. Right. In the world. Right his now. big, Example was the Caitlyn Jenner one woman of the year. Right. Versus Cassius Clay can't change his name, you know, and that's Oh, man. True. That, and, but talk about a bad faith illogical exactly. comparison. Exactly. It's like Cassius Clay, uh, that was 70 years ago. Uh, that also involves the intersection of, uh, you know, that were phobic against Muslims and mm-hmm. not mm-hmm. just it's like there's multiple layers to all this shit. And then right. Caitlyn Jenner speaking intersectionally is not just a trans woman. She's also white and rich and famous. Right. And I, the reason she was named she, woman of the year is not just cause she's trans. It's cause she's rich and famous. There's this, the celebrity aspect as it were. And she mm. wouldn't have been named woman of the year at back when Muhammad Ali was getting shit for changing his name. Right. Like right. That, right. it exactly. is a completely different world. Exactly. Like if you exactly. if you fast forward to now, if Muhammad Ali wanted to change his name, we would not give a single shit. Like that, you'd have like racists who would say stuff, but everyone right. else mm-hmm. would be like, "Hell yeah, man! Embrace your religion. That's great." But Do also, you- I, I the 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 Caitlyn Jenner Woman of the Year thing. It's it's weird, but just because it's uh, it's it's a Kardashian. Like what? I don't know what the fuck Caitlyn Jenner did to deserve that honor but also fucking cares like who was exactly who, who gave who, who gave her that award like i don't what? know time um, magazine or whatever yeah. but yeah. again it was just time a, magazine it's just time yeah. trying to be progressive boomer and hip or whatever people yeah have boomer ass takes uh what yeah. do you what do you mean when you say i want to dig into more i want to dig more into comedy doesn't matter anymore um do you still do stand up adam I haven't since coronavirus started. Okay. Like I'm I'm not comfortable doing right, right. LA bar shows. And I wasn't really doing LA bar shows before this. Like I had kind of cut that out of my life. It it's you're just spinning your wheels telling your jokes to a bunch of bitter ass comedians. But I still like traveling and doing comedy. And we had shows booked before the the lockdowns started but i haven't so because of that i have like i i do want to get back on the road and do okay so you still see it as like a noble vocation or whatever i don't no i I don't don't i remember growing up and admiring stand-up comedians so much as like the speakers of truth and wisdom uh and i can't think of who i feel that way about anymore if anyone like even the stand-ups i really love like People are right. John Mulaney is funny, um, but he's also he's just virtuosically like showing off joke writing skill. Yeah, it's yeah. not. And Chappelle was part of that. And I hate to say it, but like for me as a teenager, Louis C.K. was also part of it. There were specials where I was like, right. man, this guy's a genius. This is the truth. Everyone needs to see this. Mm. And uh, I do feel like that shine has gone. What do you think that is about? Like, why is there no truth teller kind of stand-up comedian yeah and i anymore. think there's probably an admission on our the people who seem to share our opinion that there is it's a little bad faith of us to say like okay you for a living you alter the your perception of the truth in order to tell the truth you lie cheat and steal so the cash is clay you know all that stuff like i don't think we should be focusing on that as much but it is good to point out that like 
it is a weapon. Your arguments are weapons. And whether or not you mean for them to be weaponized, it's not like when we quote unquote attempt to cancel a comedian, it's because it's not you. It's your defenders. You know, it's the people who uh, day to day will marginalize people you with X, Y, Z powers. Like that's to me when it comes down to it, when we talk about like, why does it matter? Why does comedy matter? It's because it's influence, uh, you know, reverberates through the public discourse. So I don't know. I just think that that is like a non-issue to me mm. anymore about this issue is that like comedy doesn't shouldn't matter as much but it does and it doesn't matter it doesn't matter to other comedians because that's now kind of more convenient of an opinion to be like yeah this is all stu stupid make em ups but it's like the job of a comedian to kind of like alter the perception of like how important something is in order to go for a joke i think that that is something comedy does i 100 so, percent disagree comedy mm -hmm. like once we're talking about two different things, for one thing. There's one type of comedian, like uh, Doug Stanhope, for example. Mm, right. You're you're not going to see Doug Stanhope at the Improv in Columbus, Ohio. Like he's not a stand-up who gets booked in comedy clubs. Uh, you're never going to see Jim Norton on Saturday Night Live, and that's because they are comics who do actually live by that. Listen, I should be able to say whatever the fuck I want. Mm. And that comes at a cost when you get into that lane where, okay, well, now my goal is I, I want to be on Saturday Night Live or mm. I want to have a Netflix special. When you're trying to get to that point in comedy, I don't care what anyone says. It's all about censorship. It's all about, well, you can't talk about Trump because you're going to have to go on the road and you're going to have to go to the Midwest where people support Trump. So what are you going to do? Just bomb every night? Like I've, I had comedians when Trump was first campaigning who agreed to do the podcast and then I'd send them the notes and they were like, oh, my manager won't let me talk about any political stuff. Interesting. So there are like little bits and pieces of political stuff that come from that part of comedy, but it's really rare. Like if you reflect on 2016, SNL can, they, they helped Trump get elected. They let Trump host, host SNL the, yeah, yeah. when right. we were all calling him a Nazi. Right. Like yeah. how, how do you rebound from that? How is SNL not canceled? And I'll tell you why SNL is not canceled because comedians don't have the fucking backbone for that. No comedian is going like no comedian who wants to be in that lane where you're getting fucking Starburst commercials and mm -hmm. you get to be in an Avengers movie for 12 seconds. That, that's not, that's not their focus. Like, those comedians are never going to get political because they're not allowed to. But what's wild is she, that's why. So do you agree with me that there's a difference between comedy is often taboo, but there's a difference between the kind of taboo where you're just mentioning like cum or dead babies or poop or whatever shit that you don't mention in polite society for the sake of a joke. And it gets mm -hmm. you into that liminal space where you're like, oh, we're being naughty. This is fun. We're having fun versus uh, you know, a racist imitation or we're like punching down where we're talking about classes of people. Uh, and I just feel like, like, uh, Stan Hope, for instance, well, I guess he does a bit of both, but what's shocking to me is that Chappelle, this is a $20 million deal. These three specials that he did with Netflix. What do you think that's about? Is that literally just because he was grandfathered in already? Like, you don't think that will happen again? No, I mean, oh. Of course it'll happen again. Like right. when I say comedy doesn't matter, like it's it's still going to be a thing and like comedians are still going to have specials. I just I don't think comedy's intentions are what comedy claims them to be, but like I Dave guess Sh yeah. Well, I guess I'm just saying like you're 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 saying you can't get political, but I would argue that Chappelle's as political as you can get, right? He's he's subtly putting facts together, Jordan Peterson style, to try to like trick you into thinking, "Oh, I sh I should hate this group of people." That's pretty political. He's political in the direction the comedy business wants him to be, which is mm. comedy sh comedians should be able to say whatever they want 
And I promise you, at least 50% of the reasoning behind that is these comics who've been just going on the road and doing comedy clubs for 25 years, they don't want to write new jokes. They don't want to have to figure out how to make people laugh in 2022. They want to do the same jokes they've been doing for the past 10 years. And I'm, that's lazy. But you have people like Dave Chappelle out there advocating for that. And mm. it's just going to make comedy that much easier for the people who rely on it, like for a living. And that, like, there's, there's so many. Like, we mm. know a handful of comedians, but there's so many people who just make their money doing night or like comedy clubs on yeah. the weekends. And a lot of those people don't want to try anymore. Like you, you get into comedy because you get to work an hour a night, if that, like an hour a night, three nights a week, four nights a week, something like that. Right. You don't get into comedy because you want to try hard unless you're like Kevin Hart or something. There's obviously comedians who are very driven to do a lot of things and that's great. But there's also a lot of comedians who are like, man, this is a cush this gig. Is yeah. Permanent summer vacation for me. Mm -hmm. And once you hit that point where you're just, you're, you're making it like you're making your, your living with comedy. Then you really just want to relax. It's like, I think it was Marvin Hagler who uh, was talking about the difference between a rich boxer and someone who's just coming up. And mm. his, his quote was, it's hard to wake up at 5 a.m. on silk sheets, which like once, once you're bringing in the money mm. for not doing anything extra, that's, right. that's going to that's gonna be the lane you want to stay in. And so Dave Chappelle's political on those people's behalf and fuck those people like write new jokes, be better at your job. Well, it's like, fascinating <laughs> that you say, and I think that's, that rings super true for me is that you are allowed to be political. If what your politics boils down to is let's keep everything the way it is, because we already like society already has trans people slotted almost to the bottom. And he's saying essentially that's fine. That's good. Uh, it's just weird to me how subtle the shift was. Like, I don't well, know. All my all my political opinions used to be formed by the stand up comedians I watched on Comedy Central. Well, I yeah. I, I think another really interesting example when I say mm -hmm. comedians aren't going to speak out against the institutions that are going to help them get to where they want to be in their career is the Just for Laughs Festival. Uh, I think it was two thousand fourteen. A reporter went to the Just for Laughs Festival and tried to ask Louis C.K. about the sexual assault allegations. And the Just for Laughs Festival kicked her out and issued a statement about how they consider their artists family. And you mm -hmm. don't get to come <laughs> ambush our family on the red carpet. Meanwhile, she's asking about sexual assault. Mm -hmm. And when Louis C.K. was finally taken to task for that by the New York Times, not by comedy, comedy right. did not ever take Louis C.K. to task for that. That story came back out. And do you remember any comedians saying, hey, let's boycott just for laughs? Like we should. No, right. never, not for a second. <clears throat> and I do think Louis C.K. eventually responded with, I'm paraphrasing, but something like, yeah, I like to jerk off and I don't like to be alone. And it, like he turned it into just a joke, admission. Yeah. And I don't know if people know this, but like I believe he has another special out and he's touring right now and making money. So yeah, he's making that joke. Yeah, that's in the trailer. I saw it. He's like, you're thinking about it now, aren't you? Like he's using it as like a part of like you are all thinking of me jerking off in front of women now. That's crazy. It's crazy that we're here now. What's anyway, interesting is his, his takeaway is that's funny. That's the new joke, which is yeah. so odd. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of a conflated, like, I'm the butt of the joke. Let's all laugh at me. But it's also kind of like, let's get away from this so I can keep being a f funny man. Um, kind of what Adam's saying. I think Adam is hitting the truth on that. Um, I do think that. Like, it's interesting because that's that's exactly kind of what I think I was trying to say is just that comedians have this form of self-importance that really is def defined more by the self than it is by, like, their place in society, even though we do – there are the goats, you know, um, you know, 
well, Dave no, Chappelle yeah. being one of them, but like Carlin, you know, like the way that they did something felt like it mattered. But really, as Adam's pointing out, it's just a job, you know? Yeah. Uh, and there's there's obviously exceptions. I think Chris Rock exactly. is an exception. When Chris Rock makes a special, that shit matters. Like, that's why it mm. takes him 50 years to put out a special. Mm-hmm. He's like right. Tom Waits or some shit. Right. But when one comes out, it's always great. And yeah. It, it's, I don't know. I, Chris Rock, I think, is maybe the best comedian of all time. So there's exceptions out there. Yeah. Well, Tom, and then there's also the people who just go the complete opposite way. Like, I'm a big fan of Brian Regan. Do you know Brian Regan? Oh, hell yeah. Brian Regan's amazing. Amazing. Only makes jokes that, like, you could make in front of an eighth grade class. Yep. Um, right. But they're all very strong. It's just such an interesting gamut. Uh, I guess I feel like I miss the. I miss the speaking truth to power component and it does feel like it's gone. And it felt like something that Chappelle had you know, at one point, like ownership it was of, a part of his that thing, space. Yeah. 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 And it's just fascinating to watch the effect of someone who's not really changing what they're doing. They're just pushing ahead in the same way. Adam's absolutely right. It, it feels like a train that's on a track that's just pushing ahead in the same way. And it fe- seems to be losing steam. Like it's a little lazier and it's just uh, going through the talking points sort of thing. Mm-hmm. I thought it did. Did Dave Chappelle admit to like a hate crime in this? Because that was the one moment that most took me out of it was when <laughs> oh, he told that, that yeah. vivid story about beating the shit out of a woman at a yeah. bar. That, that was, was ta- wild. Are you talking about the line where he says, like, uh, I pushed her away violently because I'm transphobic? No, no. Because no. he uses that to joke that's all a, the time. He does that. He goes, and of course, I'm transphobic, so I pushed her away. Yeah, he uh, keeps making a joke about that. No, no. This He said early in the set, he says, this one woman claimed I beat her up in a nightclub because she's a lesbian. That's crazy. I didn't even know she was a woman. I did beat the shit out of her, though. I'm not going to lie. And then tells oh, right, the story yeah, yeah. about beating someone up at a bar. And it's in a post Louis C.K. environment. I guess something that's changed for me as I've aged and since the Louis C.K. thing happened, this really crystallized for me was like I used to think comedians whole job was to make up wild, exaggerated stories uh, because Louis C.K. was always telling us like his beat was telling us I'm disgusting. I'm a piece of shit. And mm-hmm. we would go, that's so funny. And then we were all shocked to find out he was telling the truth. He, right. he like, And yeah. uh, so now when I hear Dave Chappelle say things like, yeah, I beat the shit out of a woman because she was trans. I'm like, wait, did that? I mean, I'm imagining that really happened and that nothing, there were no consequences because you're Dave Chappelle. And that, I mean, that took me. I don't think me... he said because she was trans, but no. uh, I think, yeah, uh, that story is very confusing because it does seem like he's navigating through like some fictional space like he often does, but uh, I maybe it's all true. Maybe he did beat someone. I, I thought he was more of like, I'm thinking of beating the shit out of you, and I would be right to do so, mm-hmm. which is different from actually doing it. I didn't take it that way. You didn't take it that way? No. Okay, so. Yeah, and- You think he beat someone up and is, you know, talking yeah. about it on a special? Yeah, probably. And I like, it could be a thing that came out in the news that we just- Missed, missed, yeah. Because right. they're like, I, I just googled Dave Chappelle woman fight, and there were some headlines about him getting in a heated altercation. But I obviously don't have time to read the articles. Right, right. right. But him doing that either way, I think, really speaks to this very silly notion that Dave Chappelle has been canceled. Like again, Dave Chappelle's been yeah. criticized. But right. he got paid for those Netflix specials. <laughs> He's still touring. There's a quote from him where he says, if this is what being canceled is like, I love it. And it's like, mm-hmm. right. you're too rich to be canceled. Like, you don't you don't even get to say I've been canceled if you have Dave Chappelle money. I'm yeah. sorry. Because if you get canceled, just go live on the fucking money you have. Like, that is a almost ramification-free situation. Well, like, yeah, very you inter- don't get to work, but why do you want to? Just go home. I thought it was a funny aside when he talked about, he calls himself the goat repeatedly in this and uh, talks about how uh, 
what is it? Equality is like a bus and no one's willing to, everyone's just sitting in the back of the bus and they're like, who are you to criticize? And he says, I'll tell you who I'm the motherfucker who said no to $50 million and got off the bus. And it's like, yes, you, he's referring to the fact that he turned down a deal for, for more seasons of Chappelle's show. And, uh, you know, at the time that was a very considered a very like heroic move, but I'm sure he's made $50 million since then. So I feel like it kind of loses its teeth. Yeah. It, I don't know. It's just such a crazy notion that, it, that Dave Chappelle or any of these comedians, I mean, there have been a few comics who've lost jobs. There was the guy that was hired by SNL because specifically because they wanted to appeal to Trump supporters. That is what they said mm-hmm. when they hired that guy who immediately got fired for saying racist shit. Saying racist on a shit. Yeah, I remember that. But for the most part, like it's just criticism. Like, deal with it. Like people are crit- so what? Yeah. So what? Well And if yeah, you're powerful ahead. enough to be in that spot. Uh, Netflix is not like there's something about the uh, neutrality uh, in capitalism where it's like we just kind of teach the debate. Netflix can always just be like, oh, yeah, anytime you have a special and you want to start doing stand up again, we're going to buy it. Even if it's like the kind of situation where it's like, oh, yeah, no one really, quote, wants to watch it anymore. Enough people will watch it just based on these issues that nothing actually has changed from the standpoint of like Netflix purchasing a show, Dave Chappelle doing the show, and then the people and people watching the show. Capitalism concluded. We did it. Um, Nothing really actually changed. So yeah, you can feel canceled because you feel criticized and a lot of people are doing it and you may not be as big as you were or your version of yourself is as pristine as it was, but that has nothing to speak to you can't do something. Your you, something has been taken away from you. No, not really, man. Just it it hasn't. Yeah, and like I don't I don't care if Dave Chappelle has more specials on Netflix. I don't think Dave Chappelle should be prevented or from silenced doing yeah. comedy on television. Right. I just think his opinions are stupid and right. uh, we have a right to call him out about it. Like beyond that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do I'm sure there are far more offensive comedians <laughs> on Netflix than Dave Chappelle, but Stan just, Hope goes hard. <laughs> you mentioned him, but yeah, I don't know if he has anything new, but yeah, go and that's the thing like those are that's one of the things comedians struggle with i think is probably stanhope to a lesser degree but someone like patrice o'neill mm. is a, he is a god figure in comedy right and if you go back and listen to his jokes i think he would still get away with them because he, he like he had that personality and that kind of delivery that it felt like, well, yeah, that's that's what Patrice O'Neill is supposed to be saying. Or like Anthony Jeselnik. Like Anthony Jeselnik mm-hmm. tells some that's crazy jokes, yeah. but right. like you know what it is. Like he's doing a character and he's really good at it. So it, like – but a lot of other comedians want to do that Patrice O'Neill kind of shit and they're not exactly. good I guess that's the line that's it. blurring for me too is especially as – We've grown up in the social media age, which has made it's completely blurred the line between like what's joke material and what is just something I tweeted or posted on Instagram versus you have, you know, my fans have this insight into my life and my daily routine. And uh, I don't know, that line's just getting really blurry for me where I don't understand when or if to suspend Mm -hmm. my disbelief about oh, this stand-up comedian is a character and the character is a loudmouth asshole and that's the joke, you know, Andy Kaufman-esque or whatever, um, versus they're making they're making a political statement and, oh my God, I have to decide where I land and if I support this comedian not or not. I'm so worried about that. To be honest, it's just social cues. They do a good job of prepping my mind for this is what I'm doing or they don't. And if they're doing the in-between, I'm like, you're doing the in-between. I don't know exactly what you're saying here, so I'm going to ignore it. Um, There's something earlier 
that Adam, you were like, I kind of disagree with you with. And I believe it was the kind of concept of um, like the impact of comedy and the uh, like the, you know, like taking the defenders and like them being people who are watching uh, Stanhope or people who are watching Chappelle or other comedians who are like, I want to do the Patrice O'Neill thing. Like, do you think that that is something that we should be worried about? Because it sounds like you're not that worried about it. Right. I mean, the problem with a lot of those comedians is you really can still kind of make jokes about anything. You just have to be good at it. Like you have mm. to, like you can touch on social issues without being a racist or without resorting to stereo stereotypes and slurs. Mm. And the problem is a lot of comedians just aren't good enough joke writers to pull that off. And right. like, that's never going to change. And it, <sighs> I don't know. And, I'm not. And what about people watching the specials? Like, obviously, that's what you can't this whole exor- say mm-hmm. a, a comedian is someone that like you have to be able to defend other people's versions of your work. That's what I'm trying but, to. I'm trying to meet people who do love Chappelle and even loved this last special. I'm trying to meet them where they're at, or at least understand where they're coming from, where they experience the same sequence of words and they don't think man, that's mean. That's so sad. That makes me sad that he's mean. Um, And they think, finally, someone tells the truth or speaks to power. Now, are these people just mean? Like, I don't know. I'm just trying to wrap my head around. Have you heard Damon Wayans quote about Dave Chappelle? And he was talking specifically about Dave Chappelle defending people's right to make jokes about trans people. Mm -hmm. You ready? Go for it. Dave Chappelle freed the slaves. Really? That is, Google it. Google it at home, people. Wow. That is Damon Wayans quote about Dave Chappelle defending comedians' right to make jokes about trans Truth to power, you know what I mean? (laughs) And like, I, I don't know. Look, I'm not probably in the best position to comment on that. So I'm just going to leave. I'm I'm just sliding that quote across the table to everyone, and you right. do with it wow. what you please. You but can it's go fast. Verify it. That's, it's real. Yeah, I think people think people like us are just going to come at this from a place of, well, I have liberal politics, so I hate this and everything Chappelle says is shit. But uh, that's really not where I'm coming from. I'm really trying to like keep an open mind and analyze this stuff. But man, I just I bang my head against a quote like that, and I don't understand how other humans think or feel i guess like i don't understand how wayans can think that about that that's weird to me yeah i've i've told this story on unpopular opinion a Mm -hmm. couple times but the i started that podcast uh, to promote a live show of Mm -hmm. the same name that was happening at the time and because that show was in santa monica where a lot of comedians live we would occasionally get really big name comedians who would just show up at the club and be like can i go up Mm -hmm. And of course you let like Howie Mandel shows up at your show. You're of course you can go up. You can have the whole hour if you want. Mm -hmm. And Damon Wayans came to a show once and dropped in and it seemed like he had been cryogenically frozen in like 1987 and had just written jokes before that. And then he was thawed in 2014 and pushed on stage and he read those jokes from 1987. It was Encino man is what you're saying. (laughs) At one point, like the, the joke that we always talked about the most was, uh, it it was around the time Michael Sam got drafted, uh, by an NFL team. And Michael Sam was an Mm -hmm. openly gay NFL player. He actually Mm -hmm. never played in a game, but he was drafted and Damon Wayans, he said something along the lines of next thing you know there's going to be a commercial where two players score a touchdown and then they take off their helmets and then they kiss it's going to be called the GFL the gay football league and this mm. it didn't the, the joke didn't hit yeah <laughs> it hit really similarly to how it just did <laughs> And there was this girl in the audience who must have been like giving him a crazy look. Mm -hmm. And 
he like he confronted her about it and her only response was it's just not funny yeah. and like it wasn't like it was a bad joke yeah. and it was so bad that someone was taking pictures like a club employee was taking pictures in the and back stopped <laughs> and he looked at them and goes oh are you trying to ruin my career like he oh. knew how bad he his fucking his jokes were yeah. going and here's yeah. the thing he came back two weeks later and fucking killed like right. the same he, set or a new set? No, oh no, 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 no. <laughs> okay. He came back with a completely different set and fucking murdered. But yeah, it also doesn't surprise me that uh he defended Dave Chappelle in that way. Like And or comedians who have made it are like, I'll just ride on my old stuff until yeah. something comes up and they bomb hard enough that they realize they got to refresh their set. That should be how it kind of works, yeah. you know? Yeah, of you course. You have your finger on the pulse or you don't. That's one of your powers. You have it or you don't, well, you know? And tell jokes. I just can't stress the importance of like, I don't know, Chappelle's specials from back in the day would go joke, 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 joke. And like recognizable setup punchline jokes. And the, so much of... The recent specials, but especially the closer, are spent on him talking about how he's the goat and how he doesn't punch up or down. He punches lines and uh, how he talked to his trans friend Daphne and, uh, you know, said that or he has that thing about which I thought was a great thing. Uh, he quotes Daphne as saying, Dave, I don't need you to understand me. I just need you to believe that I'm having a human experience. And he says, I believe you because it takes one to know one, but right. um, but where are the jokes? And I'm like, you talking right now is filling time that you were supposed to fill with jokes. That was wow. the social contract is I actually expected more jokes out of it. And yeah, I, I, I mean, Chappelle kind of always was that, but yeah, sorry. So is I that me? It. No, that's, I'm totally open to I it think being that he's me. Fu- he's, as his specials have gone on, he has become increasingly more Carlin-esque. You know, his Corona one was like, very much so like, I'm going to tell you like six like classic jokes, but the rest of the time I'm just going to kind of vamp. Think and at it's you. still going to be funny though, you know, and. It's uh, going to be in the was... shape of humor, but I'm just thinking at you. Right, and I yeah. think that that's what we're paying him for or Netflix Netflix is paying him for at this point but you know I don't think that that's the only that's what a stand-up sh- comedian should be it's just the transformation of this particular also, thing stuff that aren't even jokes that did make me laugh though uh, he has that heartfelt thing where he goes Kevin Hart dreamed his entire life of hosting the Oscars and they just oh took it God. away and I'm like who gives a shit yeah, yeah. Like, who say, cares, he preempted it and said like taking away someone's livelihood is like taking their life yeah. and I was like Kevin Hart's livelihood is in threat is in danger really? yeah kevin really? kevin hart does shows at soccer stadiums mm. kevin hart is fine he's the biggest comedian yeah currently. Currently. right yeah currently. oh by far yeah yeah it's it's insane There's, but he didn't um, but he didn't get to host the oscars <laughs> and what a lame dream <laughs> yeah, you want to host that why yeah. it's like yeah it's that's that's trouble that's trouble. Yeah, uh, you know this line... award show that pretends black people don't exist? Always right. wanted to host that. <laughs> Stop it, Kevin Hart. Uh, there's a line at the end that I wanted to, because I wanted to see if you guys had any clarity on it, because I'm not sure I exactly get. I want to, again, approach it kind of in the same way that Michael is letting out, like in some form of good faith from our side, because we just think that, we seem to think that he is just objectionably like he he's wrong so let's have as good faith as we can to see like let's put this to bed I and think he has he's wrong but i'm trying not to be dogmatic about it i'm trying exactly. to actually exactly. analyze the because stuff because that's yeah. what he's really trying to go for right. like he says it several times oh he wants he's you like, to think you that's listening. what he says he says listen yeah. to me and think okay. and make your conclusions yeah. Yeah. so i'll do that uh and one of the lines he says is very end of his special he says empathy is not gay. Empathy is not black. It's bisexual. It must go both ways. And that section kind of ends with him saying like, so I'm done with the trans jokes and I asked the trans community with all humility, please stop punching down on my people. That section, I really wanted to know, like, what do you think he means by that? And like, is there any way we can find a common ground? Because it's kind of where he leaves it. It's kind of says, like, here's, like, I don't have it. No one on either side has an ultimatum. But if they're the closest thing we can get to it is empathy is not gay. It's not black. It's bisexual. It must go both ways. My take is that 
then why are you trying to build a fissure between like stuff that matters and stuff that doesn't in the way that you are? Like you're saying like, you know, he brings up uh, Sojourner Truth. He brings up, you know, like Caitlyn Jenner, Cassius Clay. Like he's literally separating and saying they're very different, which is not a problem. But he says, if it must go both ways, why aren't you the first one to open up your heart and say, like, I understand you. I see you take a different lesson from the Daphne Dorman stuff. But is there some wisdom that I'm not seeing in that, I guess, is my question. His last final moments in the, in the Well, special. it is in the context of the Daphne Dorman story, which I think, A, is... That's what's so fascinating to me also, is that people who are, like, laying out these entire theses that are basically coming from the place of uh, trans people don't register to me or I don't believe them or I, I, I invalidate their existence in some way. Uh, why are they obsessed with and Chappelle included at the end going, but I don't hate them. I love everyone. I'm not mean. I have a trans friend and right. you know, like, uh, I guess I don't know that I'd want him to just be overtly hateful, but I guess I don't understand why the impetus to try and prove at the end of the special uh, I'm a good guy, though. I just don't believe that trans people are the gender they say they are. Mm. But I don't hate them. I don't hate them. It, like, it's it's a weird, like, I'm not racist, but... And I don't know why you even include that part to me. Is it... Like, if you, if you know your audience and you're catering to that audience, just cater hard to that audience? I don't get that. Yeah, I don't really understand it, and I don't get what... Empathy is bisexual sounds like a good thing to say right. in the way that love is good is like a good thing that the Beatles right. might say. Love is forever or yeah. something like that, yeah. But I yeah. don't know what it means in the context of literally having just said, my friend Daphne, who is a trans woman, killed themselves because of cancel culture, is the argument he tries to make, and then ends with the quote-unquote punchline but of course Daphne wasn't even trans because only a man would do some gangster shit like jump off a building right yeah and I knew your father you know and, and then like I that. hope Dead I can naming. meet Daphne's kid so I can say I knew your father he was a hell of a woman um yeah that's I don't know man it doesn't it doesn't sit well with me and I seem, don't get a lot of meaning out of it which is my problem with it yeah I I I I Usually he's on point because I usually can find out what he's trying to say. Um, and I can disagree with that. But that one, I was like, the way he's ending this is almost like a flash, like a flash grenade, you know, like a poof. There were still points where even if I disagree, I see where he's coming from. Like when he says Kate, the Caitlyn Jenner thing makes me upset, like if they gave black comedian of the year to Eminem that would make me upset that is a false equivalency and like I think any of us could explain why that doesn't really match up right. logically but I understand I believe him that he believes that I does that make sense like I understand I do. where I understand yeah. the sequence of thoughts he put in order to arrive at that conclusion I just my brain just doesn't do that and I think I also understand the kind of impulse that makes him want to say something at the end of the special, like, hey, I just kid. I love you all, uh, you know, but I am a turf and I agree gender is a fact, but I love yeah. you all. I think it's I think that's the part that actually breaks my heart a little because it makes right. me know that deep down, I don't think Dave Chappelle wants to be a hateful person or thinks that he is a hateful person. I think he truly believes he's speaking some kind of truth to some kind of, which that's the wildest thing of all, to some kind of cadre of trans people that secretly have all the power, which is just <laughs> not a thing. But, not. but that is the place he's coming from. Yeah. There's yeah. also this whole thing. Uh, there's this whole thing about like, uh, you know, like the people who have like legacy problems, like I had to pay my college loans so no one should have them nullified. Mm -hmm. It was hard for us. Therefore, like any says, I respect the old school gays. Um, I think that that's, I think that's a part of it f for him here. I think it's that it's more of a gripe. It's a gripe. It's the, the movement is quote doing well. Well, yeah. If you compare it to the civil rights movement in 1965. You know, a writer speaker that I never thought I'd compare him with, but I do think is apt 
he's kind of Andy Rooney esque in some way. A little bit, yeah. Like, like um, interesting. <laughs> like, there's a line where he says, uh, "Daphne wasn't Daphne wasn't trans." Uh, I don't care what the trans community did for Daphne because she wasn't their tribe. She was my tribe. She wasn't trans. She was a comedian. Uh, it's again, he keeps coming back to this thing where it seems like he hasn't picked up the concept of intersectionality or that a person can be multiple things and that every facet of their identity is valid, even though they have more than one. Uh, and it's just almost like a throwback. It's like looking at, yeah, it's like a blast from the past sort of frozen in time view. Huh. Yeah. It's like I said, they're trying to keep the status keep this train quo rolling in yeah. keep place. the money train rolling yeah yeah i kind of think that's the take that wins not that it matters but like that's the one that i'm like yeah oh it, it matters to me to it, if we're it, talking it, about the special that's that's what it is it matters to me if my take wins absolutely <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh yeah i i think that that's the right answer uh in terms of like yeah that if you have to think about if you're at home and you're like, well, these specials, all these people speaking truth to power, quote unquote, and, mm -hmm. you know, well, let's think about how that actually matters to their bottom line and to their future career, because that's what really is manufacturing these decisions, not for a lot of for almost every comedian, it seems, even the mm -hmm. ones that we thought it wasn't true about. It seems like that's just always going to be it's it's a gig, you know, yeah, I guess because I, guess. I grew up aspiring to be a comedian. There's this weird part of me that wants them to, it's like your dad letting you down. <laughs> yeah. I still always want them to be, I find myself more and more having to uh, gird my loins when like, like I love Bill Burr and he's right on the line. <laughs> like right. I feel like he's starting to slide towards saying stuff where I go, well, that's not a joke. That's just mean. But he's still not. He hasn't like transgressed for me yet. And mm -hmm. I'm just waiting for the day when I finally go, ah, oh, now I don't like him anymore. Um, right. Who? What was the name? Abe, you shouted out. I only saw that clip as a viral clip on Twitter, but I do want to get the name of that comedian who told the had the great chunk about trans people. Oh, James A. Caster. James A. Caster, thank you. So uh, there's yeah. still I mean, for all this shit, like we gotta remember that we're honing in on the legends who are all in their fifties now. And there's still a lot of young, fresh blood and comedians out there, you know. Tom Segura is really great. Tom Segura is mm -hmm. great, yeah. Making all mm -hmm. the making all the jokes without saying all the hateful <laughs> shit. <laughs> yeah, like he, yeah. he is a good example of a comedian who can touch on like racist mm -hmm. shit sometimes, but without it having to be racist. Yeah. He's, he's great at it. It has to do right. with the structure and the formula of the joke itself for sure. The yeah. approach, what you're meaning to say. And then, all that. then you get Adam Sandler, man, who will just Who's come just out. Like, I'm just going to with a special thing. and just be like, it's just going to be soft, fuzzy goof em ups and you're still going to laugh your ass off. Yeah. That's, that's that was special, a special ruled. It was yeah. so good. So good. Oh, the and dick it like, came at the right time to joke. Mm. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The last Norm MacDonald special was really good. Too. Uh, oh, Hitler's I haven't dog. seen that. Hitler's yeah. Dog? Okay. Yeah. The, end, God, the, that, the, that the way it so ends good. is brilliant. Oh God. Yeah. My, yeah. R.I.P. I loved his posthumous joke. Did you guys see the the Norm Macdonald joke about dying of cancer? No. <laughs> Which oh, right. he said, uh, I don't like how they say so and so finally lost their battle to cancer. You know, when you die, the cancer dies. If anything, <laughs> it's a draw. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Good stuff. Good yeah, stuff. Yeah, good stuff. Good stuff. All right. Uh, well, yeah. Dave when I try to tell a joke about Norm Macdonald dying of cancer. <laughs> yeah, everyone <laughs> out. get canceled. I just want to say, Dave Chappelle, it's over. We won't talk on this issue again until I'm yeah. sure that we're laughing together. Mm -hmm. All I ask in all humility is will you please stop making Netflix specials? Which I think he has now. I think we're done. <laughs> I you're gonna say, it must go both ways. Don't talk, don't, don't dunk on us either. We're also very fragile. <laughs> well, you know, you can't escape that he's been such an eloquent voice for black rights and black rights are still urgently 
needed. And uh, of course. I just think where he missteps is thinking that that black rights are in competition with LGBTQ rights. I just don't think that's the case. Yeah, there's a reason we aren't really ridiculing him on him calling himself the goat. Uh, there's reasons for that. Yeah, know? I mean, he's a great comedian. And yeah. I've yeah. enjoyed a lot of stuff that he's done. I mean, even these specials, I enjoy most of them. It's just mm. he, like... This one issue. Yeah, it, eventually he's going to touch on trans people and it's like fucking and he's gonna go. sit in it for like 15 minutes that's yes. the other thing yeah. it's yeah. like it's just they're longer now it's not trippingly he like he really settles in for a chunk right yeah but the specials aren't bad like it it would be hard for dave Chappelle to be bad at comedy considering how much comedy he does mm-hmm. like if he if you're at a comedy club and dave Chappelle drops in fucking call the babysitter and tell her she's spending the night because he's going to do Probably four to six hours of jokes and chain smoke the entire time. Mm-hmm. Right. And right. everyone is going to stay to watch it. So, like, you can't have that much material at the ready and be a bad comedian. He just right. – I don't, I don't always agree with his politics. And here's the thing. I especially disagree with the notion that I'm not allowed to disagree with his politics. Like, right. of course I am. This is, like, that's well, yeah. free speech. That's like, nonsense. Arguably the most, the most nonsense. nonsensical thing he says is that J.K. Rowling has been canceled. <laughs> like, no, man. Yeah. yeah. Again, yeah. doing fine. Yeah, even if she never writes another book. And isn't she writing another book? Yeah. And pe- people are going to buy it. And plays like, and well, all kinds the of the Hogwarts time. show on right now. They're about to release an, a massively multiplayer uh, Harry Potter game, and they're very loud and proud about how jk rowling's not involved that's mm. like except in the sense that she will get a big fat check yeah but they mm. just mean not creatively involved fine we'll never rid she, the world of harry potter mm-hmm. she probably wasn't going to be anyway well right. now <laughs> yeah now now we're gonna release this and we'll see what kind of like i'm excited to get all the Chappelle defenders up in our feeds stifling us which i'm sure is impending <laughs> oh. we'll see how important we are <laughs> no we're yeah. yeah that's true that's true we won't even register but i will say the one the one that i get consistent flack from is that is elon musk if you come at elon musk there is a cadre of like people sure. online ready to dive sure. in front of the bullet for some yeah. reason but that's uh and Chappelle that's has a little episode. of that vibe <laughs> yeah, yeah, have, yeah yeah we'll cover elon's special next we'll do that'll be great special next. i have i have special. my uh, Twitter set up in a way that I don't see any mentions or like when people tweet at me. Must be nice. Because I don't, I mean, well, I use TweetDeck and you can do it that way, but mm, yeah. I don't, I don't care. Like tweet at me all you want. I'm not going to see it. Like that's the, that's almost the one thing I, I vehemently I agree, with, agree with Dave Chappelle yeah. that he said is that Twitter's not Twitter's a real place. A real place yeah. Like it's, Remember the, the the thing that happened at Cracked where there was the the video, the school video where everyone yeah, was. I at, directed that one. Yeah. yeah. And there was like, it was like 4chan or someone got called Eight out chan, yeah. in that. And they like started this campaign of like harassment. And at one point someone was like, why aren't they responding? Like, <laughs> the, like we didn't say anything back. When people yeah. were sending all this shit online, mm-hmm. and that kind of put an end to it. Yeah, like, we called the authorities. Why? Because we're cracked.com. <laughs> <laughs> the goat. The yeah. goat. The coat. Yeah. The, the coat. Uh, this has been a pleasure. Just hearing two, you know, stand ups talking about it. This is, you know, bucket list for 2022 already, babies. Whoop. Thank you, Adam, for dropping by. Hey. I think this is a great place as good as to end it. Sure. Uh, what are you working on? What do you want to tell us about? Just uh, talk uh, to people. I, I run a podcast network called the Unpops Podcast Network. And uh, you can check that out at patreon.com slash unpops or unpopsnetwork.supercast.tech. Or uh, on Anchor, you can uh, the the we do th- three podcasts that are free to the people. And those Unpops are, um, dot supercast dot tech is that the string of nonsense that just came out of your mouth? 
Yeah, it's wow. a, it's it's okay. an alternative place to subscribe for nice. bonus episodes because not everyone likes Patreon. So mm, sure. we uh we set that up. Uh So yeah, unpopular opinion conspiracy the show pretty scary. Check those out. They're all very good. And uh, I'm I'm launching a Substack soon called Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Friends. Uh, <laughs> so you'll you'll be right. able to give me money to write. So there's that too. Delightful, That's it. man. That's a, oh, follow me on on Twitter and Instagram at Adam Todd Brown. Even Tweet. though he'll never know and he'll never respond to you, and you'll never connect with him in that way. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'll I'll know that you followed me, and every single follow uh, just makes me look better. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, also I'm not. I'm not going to talk to you. But it's not real. (laughs) Yeah. You're not a real person. No, Uh, not really. Michael, you got anything? Any small beans announcements? Small beans business? Hell no. No, I'm not a real person either. I think we should all just vanish into the winds. Yes, sir. This was a weird, strong choice for the beginning of 2022, but I'm glad we did it. Just putting this vibe out there, seeing what comes back. Hey. Oh, I'm sure it'll be fine. (laughs) I'm sure it'll be fine. I'm sure it'll be fine. Uh, next time, back to our regularly scheduled program talking about, I don't know, the mummy or the labyrinth or some shit. Yeah, some, yeah. some bullshit. <laughs> all right, thank you all. all. Right, we're out. Thanks, y'all. Hey, yeah. thanks. This has been a Small Beans Endeavor. We're a bunch of pals who make podcasts, sketches, music, web series, and movies. The Beans always have new ideas percolating, so make sure to check us out at patreon.com slash smallbeans. That's p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com forward slash smallbeans, where you can browse all of our current and past content, see what we've got planned in the future, and learn how your support can help the Small Beans grow into huge, giant monster beans. If you enjoyed this content module, please like, rate, subscribe, or tell a friend about us. We love you.